Hey there, we're li live, everybody. Well, and we're attending the women's. I want to see the shape of water. I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it, but it was weird. It's very weird. That's what you mean. Get the women's march organizers to come to the stage. Put this on. That's Don't forget to get my Mueller time. <laughs> it's Mueller time. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm listening, but I'm... Oh, I, I, I am aching for the moment. I'm aching for it. Hey, you just going away? No, two more years. I can't see, and I can't, and I don't have a steady hand. It doesn't matter, these people can't see you. Oh, my God, they can hear it. I found, I found a spot. I found a spot right there. Look at the edge. If I can get Richard, the photographer, to the stage, please. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, please. Sorry. Does CMAC have their video camera up and ready to go? You get in front of people? Yes, you did. Yeah, I, I did. I know I did. But you can't. I know I did. What can I do? I had to get in front. But it doesn't matter. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I just wanted to take I a moment to thank all of the people who made this event happen. They're standing up here on the stage in purple shirts. They put in their own time. They put in their own money. And... <laughs> I wish that we could thank everybody publicly who helped us because each one of these individuals has their own little army that have been helping them. So um, I wish you know who you are and I want to thank you for being a part of this. Before we get started with our program, I just wanted to take a moment to address something Women's March Fresno is joining other marches across the country today and making a statement to support the hashtag MeToo movement. We have an opportunity to make a visual statement that has the potential to change the discussion of sexual assault in this country by illustrating that sexual assault is a social epidemic. The United States Department of Health defines sexual assault as any non-consensual, forced, or coerced sexual action or behavior. This includes rape, attempted rape, sexual harassment, and molestation. In a moment, I'm going to ask you guys to raise your hands because if you know or if you have been or you know someone who has experienced sexual assault as defined by the United States government, please raise your hand. Now we're going to take some photos. If you don't want your face to be seen for any reason, please lower your head, turn your back, but leave your hands up because we're going to be submitting these photographs to the Women's March Archive Project to make a visual statement from all the marchers across the country today and tomorrow of how sexual assault is epidemic in this country. I want to thank you guys for coming out today. We have a great line of speakers. I know you didn't come to hear me, so I'm going to get down so we can get started with our program. And just after we finish with our speakers and our presentation, we're going to take it to Blackstone and we're going to show Fresno what Women's March is all about. I'm going to give you a short history. First Nations women were feminist. First Nations are matriarchal and they are democracies. And so it is only fitting that Fresno State University First Nations open this women's march. Woo! 
Thank you. Uh, we're very honored today to uh, be invited to do the opening for this event here, um, for this Women's March, for women's rights. Um, my name's Jeanette Jimenez, and I'm the Vice President of the First Nations a Student Organization at Fresno State. We're actually in the process of changing our name to Noom Native American Student Association of Fresno State. Um, we have brought um, a color guard here with us, uh, the A-Team, and uh, we have some uh, of our community members here with us also. And uh, I also have uh, my cousin Keith Turner, he's also our spiritual leader for our club, and he's going to do the blessing for us. Um, can I have Daha Alvarez come up here, please? <laughs> Stand up. Well, not yet. When they do the... No, if I need to go back and get batteries, I'll, you know. I'll, I'll take that back with this one. You're still going to insure it, right? Yeah. We'll feel the Democratic one later. Yes. Who do you think I should get a picture with? Nobody else. The cost is really special, right? Do you think I should try with a cost? You'll find someone for you to take a picture with? Yes. Four, I think it'll be at least four people. Colgar presents Arn!
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome all of you here to our ancestral land. I'm from this area. I'm one of the spiritual leaders from, from this area. Uh, I was introduced as Keith Turner, but my native name is Hayayich, which comes from Miller to Lake. So welcome all of you. And that song that uh, Daha sang was a strength song. And that song means, help me. Help me every way that I need help. That goes on to say, help me to help the people. And that means all of you, all of you here today. In our way, we believe that there are four colors of people. We indigenous people, we are the red people. And we are caretakers of the land. We're caretakers of Mother Earth. And we have the white people. who are caretakers of the fire. This is the way we believe. Then we have the black people. Caretakers of the water. And the yellow people, caretakers of the air. And since we were created by one creator, whom I call Grandfather, so on this earth we know that Grandfather has many names. Our creator has many names. So when I pray, and I pray with the people, to all of you, that's that you pray in your way, and we pray together for the strength of all of us as human beings. We are children of the Creator, and we are brothers and sisters. In our way, our native way, we honor women. We believe that women are just as equal as we men are. I agree with you there. I'm 100% there. Okay, you don't have to say that. No one's better than anyone else. We're all children of our Creator, however, we pray to our Creator. So as I pray, Ask all of you to pray with me. We pray together to make our area strong here. We have to take care of ourselves first because we have to be healthy. We have to be strong in order to take care of anything that's in around us. So pray for yourself first and then pray for your family, your relatives, your friends. Yes. And send prayers to those people that may have differences with us or with you. That is part of our healing. Our way is is healing, healing for everybody, and to get along as a Creator's children. So pray with me. Oh, Grandfather, our sacred Mother Earth, our Father's Son, Spirit of the Air, Spirit of the Fire, and Spirit of the Water. Grandfather, you have given us these five gifts for life, for all of us to live, every living thing on this Earth, Grandfather. If one of these are missing, Grandfather, we know that there would not be any life. So thank you, Grandfather. We pray for these five life givers to help us in our lives. And we thank them. And we thank you for creating them. Grandfather, we thank you for this event. 
for our sisters, the women, from the babies up to the grandmothers. We honor them and we thank them for giving everybody life. Grandfather, you have taught us that our mothers are our closest relations. So we thank them, we honor them from our hearts. Grandfather, we, Grandfather, we thank you for the star child, your son, for the blessings that he brings to the people, and that he worked with our spirits, all of our ancestors, all of our spirit helpers, and all the angels, as if they all work together to help us to become one as people. We ask for your guidance and your protection today, Grandfather, and all these spirits to guide and protect us today, to help us to heal ourselves and heal the people and help the land. Again, Grandfather, we thank you for bringing us all together today as one people, as human beings. Oh! oh. Uh, thank you. You can fix it, right? Yes, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> By the way, you know you what you're doing when you're when you're when you're arguing in that moment? It was caught on camera. What was? When you're arguing with me, it was caught on a live video. Hello guard! Right! Please! I don't think I can. No, it's live video. Oh, whoops. I should have said, I should have said, said something else. Yeah, you should about this country. I don't call his name. I call him 45. What do you call him? Hey, we've got to make some changes around here. Good morning to you. Good morning. Welcome. This is an important day because we have to continue to let people know across this nation that we resist some of these regressive policies and politics that's spreading around to let people think it's okay. Is it okay with you? No. It's not okay with me. Is it okay with you? No. Well, let's make sure they know it all over this nation. I want to just take a moment. I was asked to introduce myself and, and who I represent. Many of you in this crowd I know because some of us have been activists for a long, long time. My name is Desi Woods Jones. And I, I am the state president of black women organized for political action. We have chapters all over this state and they are working today just like we are here to support these things that we know are important to us and to talk and defeat and make sure we get rid of those things that we should not. Let me just tell you from the beginning what I want to hopefully inspire some of these young folks that I met today. I am 76 years old and I have been struggling in this movement since the 50s. I walk with Martin Luther King and I walk with Malcolm X and I walk with Julian Bond. I walk because I cared about this nation. I was shot at and run by, down by dogs in Alabama. And I am, have been in jail because I have struggled for the rights of people. So we have been fighting for justice, social justice, and economic justice for many, many years. I had a bout a few years ago with West Nile virus, and they said I wouldn't be here. Guess what? I'm still here, and I'm still fighting, and you got to fight. you got to fight. 
There is no end to this struggle until everyone is free. And that includes all of the people that we know have been on the fringes. And certainly by number 45, I like that side. So you pop in peace that 45. That I like that side. But you know, the sad thing is that sometimes we come together like this and we talk to each other, we get fired up, and then guess what? We go home and what do we do? Yeah, nothing. We sometimes forget and we say, let somebody else do it. We can't let anybody else do it. Right. We've got 2018 coming, we got 2020 yeah. coming. We've got to make a difference in terms yeah. of what's going on in these houses across the state, Woo! across the region, and across the nation. And it is up to who? Oh. Us to make that difference. I want to tell you a quick story and I'm going to sit down because they told me I only had two minutes. And I'm a preacher's daughter and that's hard for a preacher's daughter to talk two minutes. But let me tell you this because sometimes some of you out here may not know that. Black women, and we've been training and putting people in offices for 50 years. The organization that I'm the state president is celebrating our 50th anniversary this year. That's a long time. So we've been out here battle, battling saying we need to be at the tables where the decisions have been made that govern our lives. So we train and we encourage and we support the women out here. People like Barbara Lee, the only woman in the Congress who said no more war. We support people like Maxine Waters say, I'm with reclaiming my time. We supported people like Diane Watson long before other people were fighting for affordable health care. And so when we tell you we outvote black women, and I, this is an important thing I want my sisters to hear, and all these strong, powerful brothers who can support these strong, powerful women. We love you, my brothers. And hang in there and keep fighting with us. But what we want you to know is black women in this country outvote any other population or percentage of people in this nation. In this nation. And we are the least represented across the board. Now one, we're tired of that and you all gonna help us stop it, right? We want to see more of all of us in these places of decision making processes. But let me tell you this. We have gone out and who stopped Doug Jones in Alabama was 98% African-American women who voted. 98%. Now, but see, some of you just realized we had that kind of power. Some of us knew we had it for a long time. But you go back and when Hillary Clinton was running, guess what? 93% of African-American women supported Hillary Clinton. But some of you, some of you, supported her and women across this nation, I ain't quite mad at you, we go do better, at 53%. And what did you end up with my sisters? What did you end up with my brothers? So what I want to do is offer you a friendly challenge today. I want to offer my Asian sisters, my Anglo sisters, my Native American sisters, my Latina sisters. I want to offer you a challenge. You rise to where African-American women are in 2018. You rise to where African-American women are in 2020. You vote at 90 percent and don't you see if we don't have some changes. We will have changes in this country if you go to the polls. So what I want to do is ask you, will you make a difference? Will you make a change to fight against sexual harassment? I want you to answer, yes, I will. Yes, I will. Will you fight to make sure we have affordable care for everybody that needs it? Yes. yes I will. will you fight against sexual harassment and sexual assault? What do you say? Yes, I will. Will you make sure that the sexual trafficking that's going on with a lot of our young women will stop happening? Yes, I will. And then if you do all of those and the list could go on forever, what are we going to do to make that happen? Vote. 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 Come on, vote. Vote. Y muchas gracias por tener esto, no sé si lo hacen en español, pero gracias. Yo soy Lourdes Oliva y estoy aquí como presidente del Club Demócrata de Latinas, con la plataforma de Latinas porque nosotros somos madres, 
somos hermanas, pero más que nada somos los que hacemos este país moverse. Y agradezco a todos ustedes que están aquí con nosotros diciendo, estoy presente porque yo también soy América. América es un continente, Norteamérica es un país y es nuestro hogar, es nuestro corazón nativo como nuestros hermanos, hermanos indígenas que nos dieron la vida a este gran país. Y somos todos los inmigrantes los que les hemos dado a este país, como todo el continente y todo el mundo, les hemos dado vida. Porque somos latinos y tenemos fuerza y tenemos voz. ¿Tienen voz? ¡Tenemos voz! ¡Tenemos voz y vamos a votar! Gracias por venir a la marcha. ¡Sí se puede! When I take the bullhorn and I say, I am woman, if you could call back, hear me roar, that'd mean a whole lot to me. Okay, okay. okay so let's do this together. Right. I am the infant daughter coming out of the womb of a mother in Mississippi. I am the eight-year-old girl running down the hallway hearing her father say, I am woman, hear me roar. The 11 year old girl on the PE field being told you throw like a girl, you run like a girl, you hit like a girl. I am the 14 year old girl through the 20 year old girl who's being sexually abused and harassed by men who are mentors, who are teachers, and who are professors. I am the 20 to 30 year old woman fighting for equal pay for the same work. I am the 40 year old lesbian mother being discriminated against as I try to serve my community. And I will be the senior woman who will fight back and say, I am woman! Hear me roar! I am woman! Hear me roar! We don't do this work without remembering that is the women of color and the trans women that suffer most as vulnerable people who are most marginalized and attacked in our communities. Trans lives matter, women of color, their lives matter, and our lives matter. But the feminist men who stand here and support my father, my brother, the father of my children, and every feminist man in this audience today, I say thank you. I, I am, am woman. woman, hear me roar. I am woman, hear me roar. You are powerful. Yes. Raise your fist and say, hear my vote, Washington. I'm coming for you. Yes.
standing back and saying, well, I can see where you stand. How can you understand the obscenity that 45 is? And people who support him support that obscenity. They support the policies that discriminate, that take away rights, that give money to the rich and take away from those who need. Yeah. Yeah. You need to stand for health care for everyone. Yeah. If you're a person of faith, you believe that everyone, that's a human right to have health care and to have access to it. And Planned Parenthood stands along with you, and thank you for standing with us. young people especially welcome to 2018 welcome to history we are so blessed to be able to inherit the hard work of the past set in motion by the older people around us now it's our turn to ask ourselves what can we give to make the world a little gentler for the children of tomorrow I'll start um, it's not the time for cynicism but I get it though the armor of cynicism and apathy will protect your heart from disappointment and disillusionment and the horrors mankind does in the name of hatred that is broadcasted to you every day in your social media or your newspapers or your TV. But like all armor, it is too heavy to carry by yourself. It will leave you unable to walk, unable to move forward. I can't guarantee you by the time you're 70 years old that you will have earned your history and that the war has been won, and that injustice is over. There will always be a war, and there will always be injustice. I can't, I can't lie to you. But there will always be a war to end, and there will always be injustice to liberate. So take your armor off and bear the wounds, and don't hide behind the skepticism, so that when truth and beauty and justice and hope fall down from the sky, when you have finally earned your history, your arms will be open, your hands will be open to catch them. Astonish this snarky world by daring to believe in love. And make sure, if you're 16 years old, you can register to vote, actually. You can look for the, the people in the clipboards with Mi Familia Vota uh, shirts. So, yeah. Also, um, make sure to um, call your congressman about the DREAM Act and harass them because I, um, I didn't get to introduce myself, but I'm Sophia Bautista. I was the one who organized the March to Defend DACA in September. Yes, and um, thank you. <laughs> but, um, you know, my best friend is a dreamer, and in all six years of our friendship, she was such a goody two-shoes. She would always stay, like, behind the speed limit, and it was only until last January that she told me why. Why she was so afraid of the police and the ICE agents, and then after six years of friendship, when she finally told me that she was under DACA and she couldn't go to the Women's March with me last year, we cried for hours. Because she's a 4.0 GPA student, she was valedictorian of our high school. Those are the people you want to deport. So yeah. Whoa. And that's Bye. <laughs> survivor. Hugs were plentiful as Church got out, most not from child molesters. His 45-year-old hands <coughs> under my coat in the crowded narthex, fondling my budding 11-year-old breasts. Our family's close, his wife, my mom's best friend, his son, my brothers. Fresh hot bagels at their house after church, the taste of delicious melted butter mixed with his hideous, fat tongue forced into my innocent mouth. The moms chatted, gratefully ignoring us girls, while he watched, waited, marked his moment to cop a feel. Why weren't they looking? Help. Family vacations together, summers at the lake. Everyone safe, except the sweet young girls he was waiting to violate, molest, unnoticed. Roy Moore at the mall. Trump in the dressing room. 
The others swam while he sat on the beach in a chair with a towel over his lap, watching, leering. The parents having cocktails, but he never drank. The sober diligence of the predator watch, nailing me alone in the cabin as I ironed my shirt, forcing me, pinning me against the wall. A model citizen or a child molester? A pedophile, a criminal. The FBI came to him for a character reference on the next newly appointed president of the United States, Gerald Ford, his college football teammate. I didn't know I was not alone. My sister reprimanding me for calling the molester's wife a silent partner, that she had to have known. And I was surely not his only victim. His daughter lit the bed on fire when she was eight. Therapy, writing, and never publishing the story not knowing what a court would have done. How many years should he have been in prison? Help, help. It was hard to believe help would be there. Too many kids to mind, too little time. And when I finally told, my mom said, that's just awful. And she told me how he tried it with her, and she admonished him. Your wife is my best friend, she told him. Uh-huh, he said, and you won't tell either. And she didn't. And I told my mom, and she didn't. He got away with it. It was the 60s. He got away with it until now. Hashtag me too. Good morning, everybody, and salam alaikum. Good morning. My name is Sukaina Hussein, and I am here as a Muslim woman, part of the Muslim community in Fresno, and as a community organizer with Faith in the Valley. We are an interfaith, multi-race, social justice organization all across the Central Valley, and are proud to stand here today with folks from all backgrounds, all ethnicities, to celebrate the diversity, the power, the commitment, and the passion that we have here today and all across our communities. But I want to make sure that we find those ways to put our power and our passion and our commitment into action. We are thrilled that all of us are going to be focusing on how we make ourselves heard at the ballot. We're going to talk about how our, our vote is going to be exercised in a powerful way. But I want to make sure we all leave with one more powerful tool to fight. So everyone has their cell phones here today, right? Pull out your cell phones. Let's see them. We're going to take a moment today, right now, to take home a powerful tool that we hold and carry around every day. I have a number for you to save in your phones. This number will contact our local, our senators, our state senators, our assembly members, our, our federal representatives, our congressmen, and it will be in your phones every time an issue comes up. When a state bill is up, when a policy is up, when we want to make sure a Clean Dream Act gets passed, you have that tool. So the number is right here, 844 872 0234. Hold it up. 844. Thank you. 872 0234. You enter your zip code, you'll get your state reps and you'll get your federal reps. Keep it in your phone. What happens if you don't have a phone? Where do we get the phone number in writing? You can take a picture of my sign. Go for it. I don't have a phone. <laughs> All right. I need and when we talk, I'll follow up with you. When we talk about fights at Faith in the Valley, we know that we're lots of people from lots of backgrounds with with lots of uh, issues that we carry with us. But at Faith in the Valley, we believe that we're one people, and we have one fight because as a Muslim woman. The dignity, the liberation, and the freedom of my community is not going to happen for the Muslim community until the black community and the African American community is liberated, That's until right. the Latino yeah. community is liberated, the immigrant community, documented and undocumented, until the refugee community is liberated.
liberated, until our LGBTQ trans community is given freedom and liberty. So we have one people with one fight. We're going to do that today. I'm going to say one people, you say one fight. One people! One fight! One people! One fight! One people! One fight! Thank you all, and please exercise this powerful tool you have. Show up at the vote and call our representatives. Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom! I'm Rabbi Laura! I'm honored to spend my Shabbat morning with you all! And I'm honored to come right after my friend, my dear friend and my cousin in history and in work and in justice, Sukaina Hussein. is our voice. Yeah. Oh. Our vote is our power. I gotta go higher. There were times and there were places where our ancestors lived which in which only those who paid taxes were allowed to vote. And my ancestors, my family were victims of that. That if they did not pay taxes, they didn't get to vote. And in the Jewish tradition, it is written that in order to vote, it is such an important and sacred task that we as Jews should sell our ritual objects, our Jewish ritual objects, in order to afford the right to vote. So in this country, most of us are protected by those votes to vote because we have the 24th Amendment, which says that nobody should be prevented from voting because of taxes. No matter who pays taxes, everybody has the right to vote. And we have the sacred obligation to exercise that right each and every time it is in front of us. <laughs> Yet today, our votes, there are people in our community whose, vo whose right to vote is still threatened. There are states across our country who, that have passed measures making it harder for Americans, particularly black people, the elderly, students, people with disabilities, and transgender individuals to exercise that fundamental right. That should be illegal. And there are states, there are communities who make it just freaking difficult to get to the polls. That's a, it's very I, I, true. I, I would fix that. So I want us today to make a pledge to fight for and to fulfill this right. So say, I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. Today.
Yolanda Armendariz. I am a female veteran, Army and Air Force, serve my country well. I am also a rank victim while active duty. They have continuously denied me my right to have my disability based on that rape. I am also a lesbian. And I have always supported all my military sisters who have come out and opened themselves to say, I serve my country regardless of who I am. I serve my country. I serve my, I wear my medals proud. I deserve it. I say to all to let's support our women veterans and our active duty sisters who continue to fight the sexual harassment, the rapes, and the commanding officers, including the White House, that deny us the right to exist and not be abused. The men get all the privileges, and I'm not saying all men in that way, but I'm saying you report somebody, you're out. They tagged you as difficult. Yeah. They tagged you as insane. Yeah. They tagged you with anything they can. So when you come out, you're lucky to survive that too. I survived to this day because my parents have supported me. I survived because I have faith in God, the Creator. I survived because I refused to continue to be silent. And although I was denied again this last year of my disability and also denied that I was raped, I will not stay silent. And I think this is my way of saying, I am here. I serve my country. I wear my medals. And to my sisters that are still serving, I say, I'm here to support you. God bless. Hey everybody, I want to welcome to the stage to uh, entertain you for a few minutes, the Raging Grannies.
Americans have had enough. This year, the NRA's fear-mongering has unmasked as useless drivel. More people have begun to understand that while one policy won't stop all gun violence, there are a number of life-saving, data-driven solutions that can and should be implemented. For instance, after the shooting in Sutherland Springs, Texas, Americans began talking about the role of domestic violence in future acts of violence as a history of violence is the strongest predictor of future violence. After the shooting in Las Vegas, people who had never heard of bump stocks began discussing policies to regulate these accessories. Support for these policies is not limited to not gun owners. In fact, following the Las Vegas shooting showed Studies showed that the majority of Americans favor gun violence prevention policies like making universal background checks on all gun sales, prohibiting domestic abusers from possessing firearms, and banning bump stocks, banning silencers, banning assault rifles, and banning high capacity magazines. Americans are energized and better informed which is a bad sign for the National Rifle Association and their allies in Congress who thrive on ignorance and scare tactics. Once considered a powerhouse in legislative politics, 
the NRA's influence has dwindled considerably, even though the NRA gave $30 million to the Trump campaign. $30 million! And now they're saying that's from we Russia. We must follow the lead of our two California female senators who stra stand strong against gun violence. Senator Dianne Feinstein <laughs> and Senator Kamala Harris. <laughs> now, I want you to remember that name, Senator Kamala Harris, because I predict she's going to be the first female president in 2020. He said gun violence is not normal and it's not inevitable. Enough gun, gun violence. 2018 is the year Americans say no to the NRA. the Martin Luther King Committee. I've been a co-chair and on the committee for the past 30 years. And what a privilege to be here. Martin Luther King would tell us to continue to march, 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 and vote, vote, vote. I'm here for my granddaughter who is here. He, she is our future. And she needs to be here to see women united. Also, we have Senator Kamala Harris's director, Matt Rogers, here with us. It's because of the things that Martin Luther King has done and our community has done that Camilla Harris, our senator, could be elected. So we have continued work to do. Thank you, and thank you on behalf of the Martin Luther King Committee. And I would just like to say how honored I am to be speaking among such phenomenal women here today. So the past year has been about resilience. And we've seen that in our elections where we put people of color, women, and minorities in the office. We've had our first sick and uh, attorneys in office as well and mayors and whatnot. And to the rising of the hashtag MeToo movement to victims of sexual assault, having the courage to stand up against a society that's been oppressing their voices. Our fight is not over yet. Um, we have much to fight for, and that is precisely what this march stands for. We have the right over our bodies, we have the right to be heard, and we have the right to equal pay, all of which are things that have yet to be accomplished for all. As a Sikh Punjabi woman, this march represents solidarity with women across the globe to choose for themselves, to feel that they are enough, and to rise against misogynist cultures, and to use our voices and our votes to put people in office who will fight for us. Every day as a community organizer with Jagar Movement, um, I get an opportunity to work with young Sikh immigrant women, and um, from the Punjabi Sikh community, of course, an opportunity for them to express themselves and to live their full lives. In the 1910s, women suffragists like Sophia Dalip Singh marched for the right to vote. In the 1960s, we had the feminists uh, march for the greater rights and participation in society. Today, I march with them, for them, and for all that stand together for a better world. Let's use these rights to get to the polls, to get qualified candidates who will fight with us. Power to the polls. Thank you. Good morning. I am Noor. My name is Noor Enchantah. I am very happy today to be with you, and I'm, I am very proud to be one of you. Yeah. 
My name is Noor and I was born in Homs, Syria. I have three kids, a son named Basil and uh, two daughters, Dima and Lamar. Before the Syrian civil was my husband, Dr. Kashak used to work in his own tahini and sweet factory. I was a housewife take, taking care of the kids and other duties around the house. The Syrian civil war started in 2011. As a result, we went to Jordan uh, in 2012 to guarantee safety and have better future for our kids. We crossed the Syrian uh, uh, and Jordanian border by foot uh, and it took us around 16 hours to get there. Uh, later, Jordanian army took us to the Zatarif refugee camp and we stayed there for three days. Those days were the longest and the most brutal days of our lives. We were living in very inhuman conditions. After we left the camp, we went to Azarka City, Jordan, and we lived there for four years. On May 31st, 2016, my family and I came to the USA by a program for refugee. It took uh, around two years for the vetting processes to be completed in order for us to be guaranteed enter entry to the United States. We came in hope for a better future for our children and to start living to American dream because the United States is a land of opportunity and success. In our first months in the US, we tried to rent an apartment in San Mateo, but it was so expensive there. By the help of our relatives here in Fresno, we were able to come live in Fresno and build our lives here. The whole community here in Fresno helped us a lot, Muslims and not Muslims alike. My husband is now work at, working at Venetian Garden Restaurant and I cater Mediterranean food from my house. Uh, in, and in the future, I want to open my own restaurant and expand my menu as well as continuing to further my education and improving my status here as Syri a Syrian refugee living in America. Thank you. Fresno Women's March, are you ready? a poem I want to share with you, so I'm going to slow it down just a, a little bit. It's dedicated to my mother and my grandmother. My grandmother was an indigenous woman, a purepecha from the place of fish. My family loved her, but society devalued her brown skin, her long braided hair, her traditional clothing. However, she never stopped planting she never stopped grinding, and she never stopped praying. My mother was an undocumented immigrant, from, a, me, a Mexicana from the state of Michoacan. My family loves her, but society devalues her brown skin, her Spanish accent, her anchor babies. However, she'll never stop helping She'll never stop loving, and she'll never stop working. I'm the first generation American, a Chicana from the state of California. My family loves me, and while society may devalue my worth, my people, my history, I'll never stop being, I'll never stop fighting, and I'll never stop defending because my grandmother was an indigenous woman and my mother was undocumented and I love them. Today I'm marching for the women of my past, 
who didn't have the opportunity to go to school to learn or to have a career. The women of my history didn't have the right to vote, but I do. I'm marching today for the women of my future, for my nieces, my granddaughters, and my future great-granddaughters, because I carry the same dream as my ancestors, and I wish for them to have a better world filled with opportunities. I know I share this dream with many of you here today, but all of us do not have the same opportunity. And like my mother and my grandmother, many immigrant women continue to be vulnerable to exploitation at work, limited in accessing health care. They live in fear of an unjust immigration system and stressed by the idea of being separated from their families. I'm here today to also call attention to the importance of comprehensive immigration reform. And I'm here today to make sure that the dreams of my beautiful dreamers are not ended. And if you're here because you believe that women's rights are human's rights, if you are here today because of hashtag me too, like me, and if you believe that time's up, then I ask you to stand in solidarity with the immigrant women because we don't come from shithole countries. But this country would be a shithole without us. And if you're here today because you understand that we as women need to gain more power, then I ask you to stand with me in my campaign for Fresno City Council District 7. My name is Beba Islas. And I'm here to earn your support, your endorsement, and your vote. I believe that the world does not change for us. I believe that when women vote, we change the world. So in November and in June, let them hear your vote. Thank you. majority of them were women on that board. Let me tell you who my summer boo is and was. I was born to a very radical Hmong woman in 1970. My mother was accused of being a prostitute because she married out of her race in her time. From the moment I took my first breath, I was accused of being a product of prostitution. But I continue to live because God has a purpose for me. Amen. Same here. I am proud to be a woman. Not just a woman, I am proud to be a Hmong woman came out of my mother's womb. And I am proud that my mother gave me birth because I can stand here today to tell you that women move mountain when we unite together. My mother died in 2001 and in 2014, my friends, there was a very nasty man who disturbed my mother's peace and called her a prostitute all over again. 
that destroyed my heart and my soul and my spirit. Let me tell you, when Fresno Unified Board sat back and watched that man dehumanize me in that board, it wasn't a mistake. It was on purpose. Yeah. Let me tell you who my summer vu was. I came to this country when I was 10 years old, fled the war, the Vietnam War, with my mother. I went to school without knowing a word of English. I was forced into a traditional marriage at 14 and lived in a seven-year domestic violence. At the age of 20, I had the courage to teach mom women to leave a dangerous marriage and became a role model to so many mom women in my community. When mom women were destroyed by their very abusive marriage, I was the backbone behind them. I rescued women and children in silence. That's why there were so many hateful Hmong men who came at me. Hey. Let me tell you what kind of teacher I was. I loved my children, no matter what color they came with, no matter what race they came with, I loved them all. I not only loved my children, I appreciated every parent who sent their children to me to educate. Every day when I go to school, I save time to go to the school board to let my voice heard and to protect my children and to protect the rights of my parents to send their children to great public school system. When the budget cut crushing down, Michael Hansen cut budgets, positions, overcrowded class sizes. I had the nerve to bring the 99% Fresno Occupy group into the boardroom to push back. When Tony Vang occupied his position illegally because he didn't live in the district, I had the courage to stand up to call my own people to step down. That's who my summer view was as a teacher, as an activist, as a Hmong woman, as a warrior, as a voyeur. When they sat back and that let, they let this man dehumanize me as a teacher, and then they posted the board meeting over two years to let the entire community watch it over and over again. I was mentally and psychologically paralyzed for five years. And then my jurors decided that the abuse I received was not because I was a woman, so it trumped my entire case. Let me tell you something, I have not given up, because the day I give up and I lose, public employees lose. If I give up and I lose, women lose. When I give up, students lose. If you stand with me, you stand for yourself. If you stand with me and I win, you win. If you stand with me and I win, public employees win. If you stand with me and I win, women win. The state court has accepted my case and I will appeal and, and justice will prevail. Thank you very much, I love you all. My name is Jewel Hurtado, and I'm honored to have the opportunity to speak to all you wonderful people at this amazing event. I stand here today as many things. I'm 19, a college student, the youngest, de the youngest Democrat in District 31, <laughs> and as you all can see, a very pregnant Latina woman. <laughs> However, I am more than what can be seen. I'm a survivor of sexual abuse, and I'm sure, sadly, many of you can say the same. 
but I'm not keeping quiet anymore. That's why I'm here today, and that's why I'm marching. I'm marching for the little girl inside of me who is too scared to say anything because of how it would make me look or what it would do to my reputation. I march for the women who feel like they're going through this on their own and keeping quiet and hiding in the dark. Let me remind you, you are strong, powerful, and beautiful. You are not just another nice ass to grab. Whatever happened to you, it is not your fault. All of us here, we believe you and we stand with you. You are not a victim, but a victor. You are a survivor setting the world on fire with your truth. Now is the time to take our power back. You know, there are a lot of nasty men out there who do a lot of nasty things, especially the Cheeto in the White House. <laughs> but together, as women, united, marching, we are nastier! <laughs> Eternally grateful for the women before us who have fought for our rights, like Dolores Huerta. <laughs> and no man in power can take those rights away from us. We will not go back. We must stand together and show them that there is no force more powerful than women standing together determined to rise. Thank you. today is a said to take back the power and I'm happy to say to you that um, my foundation the Lord for the foundation uh, we have started organizing in Fresno County and I think all of you know my good friend Pam Whalen here who's from Fresno she's our organizing director and with her is Belen and Dulce who are here from Sanger from Sanger right here in Fresno County you know, we have so much work to do, and that's why we're here today, because uh, coming here today, we're coming here to march, but really, we are getting ready for the struggle, right? What Summer was saying about what she suffered in her school, we have got to change the way that they educate our women, because we are not, want, we do not want to be educated to be victims. We, as women, are strong. And we have to take our place, and we have to stand up, and we could not let anybody stand in our way of getting justice, but not just for women, not just for women, for our LGBT community, to, to stop the gun violence, yes, to save our planet, and to save Mother Earth, this is what we have to do, and say, let us really thank Diane Feinstein and Kamala Harris, you know what? Shut down the government for the dreamers! So when we leave this march, let's pick up the phone, let's call their offices, let's send them an email and say, thank you, we appreciate it, keep fighting, because we've got to make sure that our dreamers can stay here in the United States, that they won't go away. And there's another, there's another group that's kind of been left out of the conversation. And that is our labor unions, all right? Let's not forget how we got the eight-hour day and weekends and safety standards, unemployment insurance, disability insurance, right? Because working people and labor unions fought for all of those benefits that we take for granted. And if it were not for labor, we wouldn't have an increase in the minimum wage, right? And without labor, we do not have a democracy. We do not have a middle class. So please remember that. 
And so listen, when we leave here today, as I said, this is only the beginning, and it's not enough to vote. We have got to, we've got to organize other people to vote. We've got to organize other people to vote. And I, I have to say a little bit shame on you in Fresno, I'll tell you why. We had a great woman, you will remember, who ran for Congress, Amanda Renderia. Remember Amanda? Okay, well, well, you know, I live in Bakersfield. You know Bakersfield's pretty conservative? Yeah. But guess what? Amanda won in Bakersfield. But she lost in Fresno County. As you may know, my son Emilio Huerta is running for Congress. All right? And guess what? last election cycle. He won in Kern County, Bakersfield, but he lost in Fresno County. So what does that mean? That means that we in Fresno County have a lot of work that we have to do, right? Yeah. We have a lot of work to do, and so I hope that, I'm gonna ask all of you right now, you know, we had people raise their hands a little while ago. I am going to ask you the question right now, how many of you are willing to go out there and organize, get your friends to go out there, knock on the doors and do the phone banking to make sure we have to build our own wall in Congress, a progressive Congress people that will fight for us. Let me see the hands of those that are willing to go out there and work to make this happen. Well, I know that we're going to make it happen. And, you know, we just celebrated Dr. King's birthday. And another person they forget to mention in those celebrations, Coretta Scott King. And Coretta Scott King, she said, we will never have peace in the world until women take power. Well, I'm going to amend that a little bit. I'm going to say we will never have peace in the world until feminists take power because the men in this audience are also there for all of us women. And yes, we have to normalize abortion. As a mother of 11 children, I am saying here to you that every woman has that right to make the decision for her own body, all right? And then no one can take it away from them. And a big applause for Planned Parenthood and for Patsy Montgomery. So, we're not going to get discouraged. I want to share the words of the poet Pablo de Luda with you, Chilean poet. And he said this, They can cut all the flowers, but they can't hold back the spring. They can cut all the flowers, but they can't hold back the spring. Well, we are the gardeners of justice. We're going to go out there and we're going to sow those seeds. And we're going to go out there and we're going to organize and we're going to come back with a roar, yes, with a roar, we are the flowers with a roar, and we're going to take back our Congress and take back our presidency. We're going to get feminists in power on those school boards, on all of these boards, Congress, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're going to make it happen. And so I am going to ask you a really important question, and I know that you have the answer. And the question is simply, who's got the power? Well. We're going to do it one more time, but we're going to do it so loud that number 45 can hear us, that the alt-right can hear us, that the misogynists and the homophobes and the sexists and all of those haters can hear us, okay? So, I want to shout it out and I want you to answer me back and let's make that roar really loud, okay? Who's got the power? What kind of power? People power! One more time. Even louder. Who's got the power? Yeah. What kind of power? People power! Let's do it one more time, but this time we're going to say, when I say what kind of power, we're going to say voting power, all right? Okay, one more time. Who's got the power? Yeah. What kind of power?
I know this is going to be like a silly question, but is anybody ready to march? Yeah. All right. Well, we're getting ready to take the banner down because Dolores is going to lead us on our march. Yes. If I can get uh, my banner carriers up here, Zoe and Sophia. Um, Jewel's going to lead us in a song she's going to be singing as we head west on knees and then we'll go right. south of Blackstone. Like but if you can give Dolores away. just a minute to get out there and the follow Dolores yes, on this march, that would be fantastic. And you can keep this so Jewel's going to join and start singing for us and we'll get ready marching. Hold on. I want to wait till they finish speaking. I want to wait till they finish. Put on your face, know your place, shut up and smile, don't spread your legs. I can do that, but no one knows me, no one ever will. If I don't say something, if I just lie still, what I be? That monster scared them all away If I let them hear what I have to say I can't keep quiet No, oh, no, I can't keep quiet No, oh, oh, a one woman riot No, I can't keep quiet for anyone, no, not anymore, cause no one knows me, no one ever will, if I don't say something, take that dry blue pill, would I be that monster, will they run away, so I to do this I can't keep quiet no no I can't keep quiet no a one woman riot no no I can't keep quiet for anyone no not anymore. Thank you, everybody. Let's go march! Okay. Hey. Let's go over there and I'll see if we can find them. All right. Should I do any more interviews or is that it? No, we're done. No more interviews? As you can, here's the march right behind me. Look at that. They don't really, they really don't like our current, they don't really like our, don't like our current administration. And this is, and now you see a nice, look how many people come, of our of the city come here to protest against him. But, but, that, but when I go work there, it's never kind of maybe I can get a shirt, shirt from them, right? And you'll probably wear it. May I interview? May I, may I interview some of the people here? No. It says it lasts till three, right? Yeah, but we're not sitting till three. What's the, what's the remainder time? No, I mean what's look in the thing. Uh, it's up to me. We're gonna leave in about fifteen minutes. Are you get, are you gonna still find a shirt? Jeff. All right. What did I say? You will. I told you I'd get you a shirt, even if I have to look online to get it. If you can't find it, I go on the website and then send, send you the link? Yes, we can go get you one. All right. How do you like your Democratic shirt very well? Maybe, maybe you can have, give my give some ideas on how to make improve it. On how to improve it, you know? So how do the mail-in thing work? Mail-in thing. You know. 
You know, we're going over there to sort mail. We're not sort mail. Fold, fold pamphlets and mail. Stuff envelopes. So what whatever it is they need. How, will they contact you and ask you about yeah. that? What, they're moving? Hey, look. You see anything? I can see how far down they've got. Because there's so many people, I think this is our walk. <laughs> probably use it if they, but they could probably edit it, you know. I can't, I don't know how to cut off. Look at all these people. Thanks for clearing it up, Mama. What? 
What's your hat say? Oh, I'm sure. What's your? What what is what is, what's that what is that exactly? Um, we're here to observe the protest and, and uh, document anything that happens during it that might be uh, needed to kind of prove the facts of any case that's brought in the future or uh, whether or not uh, so, just so, to observe the, the police if necessary. So in short, anything wrongdoing, right? Essentially. All right. And by no means. A, total spokesperson for them, but that's... In a nutshell. That is a very cursory summary of what we do. In a nutshell. I, what, I wasn't sure. Huh? No. Hey, when we drive, hey, when we drive, can we drive by here and hold this up? Uh, how crazy. Well, people are starting to come back now. See the women are starting to walk back. Sign? No, honey, I don't want to be in the video. Well, you can put the sign I'll over here. Let's hope I didn't accidentally get you in the shot. Is it okay, can we? Should we start across head across that little thing? Have one in three minutes. Should we head across the thing in three minutes? Well, by the time we get there, it will be three minutes. Not quite. I mean, I mean, right. Stop right. Stop right at that thing. I know I'm gonna do a lot of editing just to put this together. Yes, you are. I'll get to work on it. Okay. I'll probably have it up either this either this side. You I can't. Sorry. I can't, sorry. I hope this is a good video. Well, I just rise up wait, as wait. one. Health, health for all. Have a one more. Got it.
Like a video, like a video camera. Because my mind doesn't work with that. Isn't that what most people have here? Video camera. I think so. Hold up, wait. Sorry. Oh, I've got to go to the bathroom. Am I going there? Oh. Mm -hmm. I'll have to go when I go home. So, what did you all think of the Women's March? Did you like, did you like it? Did, yep. you, did you like it? Oh, I love the Women's March. It was wonderful. Huh. Huh? Turn it off. All right. That's all. That's all, folks. See you next, see you next year.